pray right now, God, that you grant them peace right now. Amen. That surpasses all of their understanding. Yeah. That it may guard their heart and their thoughts through your son, Christ Jesus. That I pray for the for the betterment of St. Paul. Yeah. God, that we can be the church of God that draws people in and not push people away. Yeah. God, that we are here to love on people and not to discriminate against people. God, that we are a church that is in, inviting and inclusive and not an exclusive country club. God, I pray right now, God, that you make it happen. God, I can't make it happen on my own merit, God, but it is going to be through the power of the Holy Ghost that shall help and aid and guide and comfort us. God, I'll touch all of those families who've been afflicted with COVID-19, who's still dealing with the ramifications of dealing with a disease, God, that we have yet to understand. God, although our finite minds may not understand, God, you do. And so God will still trust you even in affliction. Even as Job testifies, though he slay me, yet will we trust in you. And so God, trusting you ain't never turned out bad. Trusting you has never made us look crazy. God, the trust in you always got us through the hills and the valleys, the storms, and the situations we've had to go through. And so God, cover us. God, lead us. God, protect us. God, from the pulpit to the pew, let there be power in the house. God, that miracles, signs, and wonders can take place. That hearts are changed, that lives are transformed through the power of your word and your spirit. God, will you grant that to St. Paul? The people that are faithful, determined, and love you. God, I already see it happening. And so, God, let our faith catch up with the vision. Mm. I hear you, God. Somebody needs to know that you still care about them. That you have not left them nor forsaken them. God, touch their hearts right now. Touch their spirit right now. Let something be done in this service. In this worship experience, God, that will draw them closer to you. And God, let the change we need start within us. This I ask in your son Jesus, holy and righteous and magnanimous name. And everybody seal that prayer with a hearty amen. 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 amen.
It says, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Let us pray. God, I need you to cover my sinuses and cover my voice right now. Anoint me, God. Cover me. Strengthen me. Guide me. Preach out of me what you've already preached to me. Teach out of me what you've already taught me. And so, God, as I always do, ask God that you wrap me in your presence that no man or woman shall hear or see my deficiencies, fallacies, my sins, my shortcomings, my faults, or my failures, oh God. But they only see you working through me by your power and mind. And the people of God that really need the word ought to shout amen. 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 Here it is. For this Sunday, the second I am, I want to title this, Don't Miss God in All of This. Don't Miss God in All of This. Seven times in the Gospel of John, Jesus makes a powerful statement beginning with the phrase, I am. The first, as we discovered on last Sunday when we talk, talked about, I am the bread of life. Yeah, yeah. Today we talk about, I am the light of the world. He then says, I am the door or the gate of the sheep. Mm -hmm. Then goes on to say, I am the good shepherd. Goes on to say, I am the resurrection and the life. He goes on number six and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he concludes by saying, I am the true vine. These comments echo the words of God, which were spoken to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, 14. There, when Moses asked who he should say has sent him, to Israel, God tells Moses to tell the people, I am that I am. He says this to the people of Israel that I am has sent me to you. This phrase, beloved, implies the simplest expression of God's nature. He just is. <laughs> Everything that you need him to be, he can be. Uh, he must be because that's who God is. When Jesus uses this phrasing, he is deliberately invoking this same sentiment. John's purpose for writing the gospel, here it is, the, he says in John 20, 31, he says, these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Somebody say, I'm getting to know Jesus. John's, he has two questions. Uh, for the reader to wrestle with. Here's number one. Who is Jesus? Number two. What do I do with his teaching and his word? Uh, this is the second of the seven I am statements of heaven's hero and earth's emancipator. The first came when Jesus was preaching to a crowd in Capernaum the morning after feeding, two, uh, feeding the thousands with two fish and five loaves of bread. And now, two chapters later, we find the scene of this text occurring during the Feast of Booths in Jerusalem. That means there was a lot going on. Jesus has already used festival rituals as analogies for his role as the Messiah. You can look in John 7 and 37 and 38 as a part of this major festival of lamps would be lit using wicks made from the priestly garments. In addition, here it is, light was a powerful metaphor in the Hebrew uh, culture. Lights for the Jewish person was the ultimate ideal and representation of salvation, knowledge, and goodness. For Jesus to claim that he's the light of the world was not to say, I'm going to light up your day. He's not saying that I'm going to wrap up your week. He says, literally, I came that I am the light of your entire life. And that ought to shout somebody that Jesus ain't some fly-by-night Negro that comes in one day and leaves out a 
another. I wish I had somebody to talk back to me because I'm preaching better than y'all responding in here. Jesus ain't come by here just for Sunday. Jesus wants to light up your life on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I wish I had somebody to talk with me that Jesus will walk with you and he will talk with you and he will tell you. You want to know Jesus? Oh, you can't be a part time believer. He wants more than just weekend visits. You wondering why? You ain't got light all week long. You get about Tuesday, Wednesday. Your light get a little dim. You start turning into the person that you're trying or what you proclaim out of your mouth but that you don't want to be no more. But by Wednesday, somebody that tapped on your last reserve nerve, somebody that got you to flip your script. Now you acting like you was 20 years. Where are my people? Where are the real folk at that will just talk back to me? People really do get on your nerves, but I got to have Jesus. Somebody said, I need mean Jesus. I need mean Jesus. I need mean you. The text shares with us descriptive nuances. This familiar scene where scribes and Pharisees bring this woman into a marketplace to accuse her of having a good time that she wasn't supposed to be having. But the last time I checked, it does take two. To take them. And I'll let leave the rest to your imagination. Uh, but that's what was happening in the text. I gotta keep it real with you. However, they brought her to Jesus. I was confused. They didn't just want a good time. They wanted a little bit more than that. They wanted to tip Jesus in all of this. Isn't it amazing that you can be about your day well, and people bring mess? You ain't bother nobody, you ain't call nobody, you ain't text nobody, but as soon as you pick up your phone, you have to get down. And somebody signs in your messages, call your phone with some mess. Because people can be messy. But here it is. The Pharisees and the scribes were supposed to be some holy rules. Yes, they were supposed to be some church folk. It is a little amazing. I'm just in the text. I hope y'all don't, don't get too mad at me with Jeff. I wish you had left me for fast, buddy. But, 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 but here it is church people bringing Jesus some mess. Yes, sir. One thing I've learned when I was in elementary school. Um, is that whenever you point one finger at <laughs> you got three of them pointing right back at you. How do you know she was doing what she was doing? I wish y'all would help me. It's right there in the tent. How do you know that she was doing it right next to you? Don't miss God on all this. Hold on. Oh, yeah, we want some. Yes, Church folk, the men were supposed to be the carriers of the word. Yes, the ones that are supposed to hold up the rituals and, and to keep everything in line spiritually. Bring a woman to Jesus, not to save her, not to redeem her, but to accuse her. Beloved, we've got to learn how to be more compassionate when we find people in mess. Yes, 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 yes. Because it could be you the next time. That's right. That's right. However, they brought her to Jesus to tempt him to see how he was going to handle the situation. Here it is. They begin to start quoting Mosaic law. 
in verse number five. He says, one of them began to say, now Moses in the law, because you know you always got people that keep up with the rules and the regulations and, and the fine print. Now, he said, now Moses in law, Mr. Jackson, um, commanded us that such should be stoned or killed. But what sayest thou? <laughs> you got to read the text the way the text is written. You can't just read the text. You got to, you sometimes you got to be animated when you read the text. Sorry for me being dramatic, but I'm trying to get you to get the point. Um, but what sayest thou? In verse number 12, he gives us an impactful, impressive, and passionate statement. But he spoke unto them, saying, I'm the light of the world. And he that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. <sighs> Here it is. More than 150 years ago, inventors began working on a bright idea that would have a dramatic impact on how we use energy in our homes and in our offices. This invention changed the way we design buildings, increased the length of the average workday, and jump-started new businesses. It also led to new energy breakthroughs from power plants to electric transmission lines to home appliances and electric motors. Like all great inventions, the light bulb can't be credited to just one inventor. It was a series of small improvements on the idea of previous inventors yeah. that have led the light bulbs to LED light bulbs. Yeah. When we think of light, we right away think of the S-U-N. Yeah. We've been taught that the sun is the center of the solar system and thus is the light of the world. Some Figures reveal that the sun's greatness, for instance, the sun is 93 million miles away from Earth. That means that if you were a baby, you had to have left here and you'll be 71 by the time you get there. It outputs an energy of 70,000 horsepower per square yard per minute. Lastly, the temperature at the sun's surface is about 10,000 degrees. Fahrenheit. But the sun, S U N, and all of its greatness, yeah. it's impressive. Yeah. It's still not the light of the world. Yeah. The light of the world is the S O N yeah. of God. Yeah. Jesus declared himself to be such. He is the one who made the sun. As you in, for he existed with the Father in creation. He is also the one who, with one bold stroke, declares, I am the light of the world. Though it is beyond our grasp and comprehension sometimes, let us reach out by faith and try to understand some of the Lord's meaning in this self addressed metaphor of the Master. He, huh? Has the S-O-N, Jesus, had a great impact or influence on your life like the S-U-N? <laughs> he can brighten up your day in ways that the S-U-N just can't brighten yeah. up. <laughs> that he'll bring you out of a place of darkness when you think and, you, and it seems that there is no light. And he reconciles, here it is, this woman's behavior and extends grace and mercy to her because what they wanted him to do was go against his own teaching. But he said, no, I'm Jesus. He says that I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of life. For Jesus to make this statement that he is the light of the world implies that there had to have been some darkness around. Yeah. Because I've learned that the only reason you need some light yeah. is when it gets dark. Yeah. 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 
Don't miss God in all this. Because sometimes you can miss God when you're in darkness. Because you've been searching and plundering, reaching in the darkness. Have you ever tried to find something in the dark, especially in a room that you've never been in? You're, you're walking slow, you're, you're reaching out. You don't want to stub your toe because you don't want to say the expletives that you've been trying to forget for the last 20 years. Don't y'all look at me like that because I know you still know. Here it is. He says, yeah. like you are searching in a room of darkness. Yeah. He says, you don't have to search. I am the light that you need in your life. And Jesus offers himself to be the light in the midst of darkness. And when you look around this world today and you see the senseless killing of young black men that look like me, that's some darkness. When you have a whole state that makes a, a mansion or a law or a, legis a piece of legislation that will affect all of women in Texas. That's some darkness. Y'all better talk back to me in here. Anybody have some darkness in your life? I don't want you to miss God in all of this because he will be the light that you need. And I came to tell somebody we have a savior that always offers us a way of escape in the midst of darkness. Who doesn't sit silently by just to let you sit in your place of darkness. But he had a mission to fulfill. He came that you might have life and have that life more abundantly. And you can't live a life in darkness and expect to continue to live. Because you will be like the person in a room that you've never been in trying to search and plunder only to find nothing. But I came to tell somebody, I'm getting ready to get out here, that God will be the light in the darkness. Can I tell you why? Because that's just who he is. And that's a good reason to shout right there. Because Maya Angelou says that when a person shows you who they are, you better believe them. But can I push the envelope just a little bit further? Because we only like to say that when somebody makes us mad, upset, or frustrated. But I can't to tell somebody I feel my like up in the heat but I came to tell somebody that if you if God is showing you who he is in the text why are you questioning him why can't you believe him even in the midst of darkness God will show you who he really is and can I
God. I'm sorry I missed you. But I didn't come to church to see how cute you was going to be. I didn't come to church to see what kind of dress you had on. But I came to church in search of the light. And I believe that the light is in St. Paul. Guess what? Ain't no accusers in this room. 
we're not going to accuse you. The only thing we want to be able to say about you is that you got saved today. We want to celebrate you. So if that is you today. Make your decision today and say, I want to get out of this. I need Jesus in my I don't know everything. I don't have it all together. But I'm going to try Jesus. David says, taste and see that the Lord, he is. He is good. If that's your decision, make your decision today to be saved. He's not going to be the light of just your day. He says, I'm going to be the light of life. That means from now until you close your eyes and as the old saints will say that you're laying on that tool anymore. He's going to be the light for you. And some of us, you are the house full of electricity and you have to turn the switch on. Okay. That doesn't help. I think it was last week I told us to set the light in the bathroom at the house when it wasn't working. It was the only light in the house that wasn't working. And I called him. I said, now nah, I'm from the country where we, you know, so, sometimes in fact, if you flip that breaker, everything comes back on. Didn't happen. And I called him and I told him. And he said, let me call him. Uh, the landlord, all that good stuff. He called me back and said, Pastor, is there a reset button? In the back? I had to plug it in so I couldn't really see it. And I said, well, let me look. And I took the plug in out, and there was a red reset button. And as soon as I hit the reset button, the light came on. Somebody needs to hit Thank you for helping me, Mr. Simpson. Because here it is. I was all upset trying to figure out why the light ain't working. And he called me with a simple solution. Get the reset button. I'm about to shout my dog on stuff. Somebody in the room needs to get the reset button. And that's you. You can hit the reset button by walking down here, giving your life to Christ. Maybe you want to be reconnected to Christ. You done been living your life, you done grew up in church, you know about God, you heard about Jesus, all that good stuff. But you got older, you started experiencing life, and life started experiencing you. And you start going away from the church because you said you ain't got time for that because Saturday was too full for you. Amen. Oh, my mama generation would tell you that they would go out all night Saturday and still make it to church. Oh, Sunday morning. That's my mama. Amen. That's you. You can make your decision today. You ain't got to hesitate, don't vacillate, don't contemplate. Make your decision today. That's your decision. Maybe you want to join St. Paul and become a member here where you can grow. This is not a perfect church. I ain't perfect. I'll be the first one to tell you, I ain't perfect. I trip and fall sometimes. But I don't stay there. Because he tells me that his grace is sufficient for me. And all of us in here are sinners saved by grace. So if that is you, if you want to grow here, you want to plant yourself here and grow here. Make your decision today. I'd love to be your pastor. And St. Paul would love to be your church family. Amen. Is that right, St. Paul? Thank you, God, for being the light in the darkness 
a light that we can follow, a light that we can emulate, and a light that not only emulate, but we can illuminate. God, we want to be a reflection of you. God, that everything that you say, we say. That everything you tell us to do, God, that we we won't fuss, fight, and complain, God, but we are going to, to follow your word. Because your word hasn't failed us yet. And we thank you right now for your word. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, being the light of life. And so, God, those who may be experiencing darkness in this season, God, I pray right now, God, that they can hit the reset button. And lights come on, that things start happening, God, that prosperity and blessings begin to hit their house, God. Let them know, God, that you are still able, that you still care, God, that you are still a loving and blessing, God. We thank you right now. God, we even pray for the hearts that may have been hardened due to past pain and hurt and guilt and shame. God, they may not respond today. God, but a seed has been planted. And God, in due season, God, that seed is going to bring forth some fruit. And God, I pray, God, that in the right season, that they are going to bear fruit. That is going to be a blessing, not only to them, God, but those around them. God, allow us as St. Paul to start bearing some good fruit. God, I pray for each member, God, that they receive the light. That they don't walk in darkness anymore, God, but they are walking in the light of God. Because we are walking. Yes, we are walking in the light of God. And so we thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God praise for his word. Amen.